They usually used 39 so they didn't miscount. Imagine being beaten on the back by nine times. Was it right? And that's the kind of rock that Solomon is talking about here. If you beat him with a rock, he will not die. You're going to be sore for a while. Maybe you can listen, but he will not die. Look at some of the others. Proverbs 29. Verse 15, 16, 17. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. And I saw that in action one time. I was with my dad shopping. I was about 14 or 15. And there was another boy in there, his mother was with him, about the same age. And his mother kept telling him, do this or don't do this. Oh, Mom, shut up. If I want anything from you, I'll let you know. My dad would climb the wall that offended him so much that that woman let her son get away with talk with him like that. Bring shame upon his mother. Correct your son, and he will give you rest. And you, yes, he will give delight to your soul. And then, I look back now. My younger son said, Dad, you were a hard father. Yes, I was. And I had a hard father. But none of my brothers, my sister, and myself ever served a minute in jail. We've never taken any kind of drugs. We tried to be obedient to the law. Why? Because my father and mother insisted that that's the way we were going to be when we were growing up. And we absorbed the lesson. I admit the society that we had at that time didn't have all the temptations that it has now. But the principle remains. Parents have a responsibility to train their children, including spanking them or whipping them, as is necessary. <clears throat> now, some of these do good outfits in the United States got to the court now. They have communities pass a law that you can't spank your child. I asked my father, what can you do? If I had done something that I deserved to be punished like that, and that law was in effect when I was a kid. He said, well, let it take you down in front of the, the police station. Where do we got a crowd of, that I do in front of them? It's the kind of man he was. And he meant it. Well, we looked then at some of the I wonder why so many of them are in Proverbs. Because, like I said, Proverbs is a book of timely tidbits for daily living. The guides in what God inspired Solomon to write as to how we should live in this life in terms of practical applications. We can find the book of Proverbs breaks down into different areas. And most of what's in there are guides and help tips on how to live this life better in God's service. <clears throat> so I, I'd like to leave you and with this summary. I've talked about these two points before. The two God-demanded relationships that we have to have in order to go to heaven. And that's what salvation is. Build and maintain a right relationship with Him. I will put this diagram on the board. Build and maintain a right relationship with a fellow human being. That is salvation. This is what God wants. It's not theology. That's reality. There's far too much in today's religious groups that emphasizes the theology apart from the reality. The theory may be fine, but how we put it effectively in our lives. And that's what we must do. We're to preach him. We are here, Revelation 4, verse 11, for life. Praise and purpose things on our power and we're creating our Lord. That's what our purpose is here. And 
that's what we have to live by in a practical way. What God wants us to be in a relationship with Him, wants us to be in a relationship with each other. Really? No.